worship service tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, Wednesday night we'll have Awanas at 6 p.m. also. Uh, upcoming events, we have a business meeting next Sunday night. Uh, be electing new officers and uh, filling positions, so you need to be here. Uh, and then uh, September the 19th, we'll be celebrating Back to Church Sunday. Uh, we started that several years ago, been very successful, and so we're looking forward to that. Uh, also, Operation Christmas Child, out of the month for September. Art and school supplies, scissors, pencils, sharpeners, markers, arts, crayons, pencils, sketchbooks, etc. So uh, keep that in mind. We'll be looking for those items. Or any bargains you may find. We pay people. Anything. Nothing liquid, nothing army related, no camouflage, nothing like that. Um, we're going to work on them tonight, the youth and the kids. We're going to work on them tonight at 6. All right. Youth and kids are going to work on shoeboxes tonight. Uh, while the adults are in the service. So if you want to bring your kids and do that, they always enjoy that. And so keep that in mind. Be just pray, praying for Operation Christmas Child. Uh, and then on over, over in October, uh, the Barnetts will be with us uh, on October the 10th uh, here for the morning worship service. Uh, they'll also be over at Beach Grove Church October the 9th, that Saturday night before that. And so we're looking forward to having them. Uh, any other announcements? <clears throat> in our Sunday school hour, we had 32 in attendance, an offering of $749. Uh, we had 51 contacts turned in. We appreciate that. Just keep inviting, keep inviting. Uh, you'll wear them down eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Be persistent. Don't be obnoxious, but be persistent. And so we would invite you to come join us for Sunday school if you haven't been coming. We're starting a new year this year, so uh, church year, so uh, it'll be a good time to start. All right. Any uh, prayer requests this morning? We got a lot in Sunday school. A lot of people are sick. A lot of people in the hospital. A lot of people are grieving. So uh, let's speak. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for all those who come this way this morning. Uh, Lord, just thank you so much for this opportunity we have to gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ in your house here at Townley First Baptist. And Lord, we just pray that you'll bless our time here together this morning. Uh, Lord, just thank you for those that are visiting with us. Uh, Lord, just may they feel at home and, and welcome here. And Lord, we just pray as we begin our worship service. And first in song, we just pray that you'll... Uh, we'll just lift up the name of Jesus through song, and then in the preaching hour, uh, just be Brother Wayne as he comes to break the bread of life to us. And Lord, do uh, remember all of these that uh, we've been mentioned here this morning. Uh, those that are sick, we pray your healing hand might be upon each one today. And Lord, especially those that are grieving, we pray that you continue to bless them. And Lord, just give us a good time in your house. Forgive us where we found you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to recognize those who've had a birthday in the past week. Anybody have a birthday? Anniversary? Who had a birthday? You had a birthday? Come on. All right. Come on. Who's pointing? Who? Nobody. All right. Nobody had a birthday back there. So.
Yeah, did you say anything? Did you? No. But uh, we all have birthdays, though, that's for sure. But uh, again, we thank you for being here today. It's a good crowd, ain't it, in God's house. I uh, just want to say, I know we've got some visitors, but I just wanted to point Dane Benton out. Uh, he didn't graduate high school with. He come from uh, this morning from Nesbitt, Mississippi. No, I'm just kidding. They said Jimmy is Jimmy's uh, son. But y'all give Dane a hand. You appreciate him being here. And, uh, I've been in high school together and uh, spent 30 and something years. It's just hard to believe, but uh, I've always thought a lot of Dean, and, and I do appreciate you being here, bro. And uh, we're going to all stand. Let's sing a song. If you'd like to stand, we're going to sing I'll Fly Away. Don't look on the screen. We don't have it in the book, but uh, maybe you can sit well enough. Let me turn off the light. I know what we're going
This song kind of came to my mind this morning. I had a hard time getting it downloaded this morning, but I did. Uh, and it's going to end up, end up being kind of a continuation uh, uh, Brother Johnny's Sunday night service. If he was, or Sunday night sermon, if he was here Sunday night, you, you missed a blessing. Uh, it was a great message. And, and one of the, the uh, statistics that he shared this morning, or Sunday night, excuse me, uh, was that 50% of Christians had never heard of the Great Commission. That was a statistic from Caleb that he had heard. And, and I started thinking about it. I know we've preached on the Great Commission. I know we've talked about it. And, and everybody... Uh, and as a Christian, uh, should be able to look at God's Word and know that we're supposed to go and tell and share the gospel. Amen. And, and we know that. Uh, this morning, I'm going to preach a sermon based on that because it just kept coming right back to it. But I will share this. We uh, had, um, I mentioned Dane here this morning, and, and Jimmy, uh, Brittany came last week, uh, Dane's uh, daughter and, and Jimmy's granddaughter. And, and I read a a thing off of a, the visitor card. Uh, we don't sell these like to telemarketers or nothing, okay? We don't do that. Uh, all their information. But one of the comments they had here uh, was, thank you for having me and for being a friendly body of Christ uh, for Jimmy and, and Papa. And, and I read that before Brother Johnny ever preached that night. This is the point I want to get to. Guess what he was preaching on? The body of Christ. Amen. Ain't that the way God works? And we're all a body of Christ. And as we start this new year, uh, we start this new church year, I should say, uh, it's important that we realize, you know, that we've got a job to do in spreading the gospel. I know people today, we can make, you know, there's reasons why, you know, people are not in church. There's, there's reasons, but there's also excuses. And, and we need to get past all the excuses and know that we're still working for God. Amen. 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 Let me turn this light back on. I didn't forget about that. But I'm going to sing a song. I haven't sung it in a long time. But it's a song called Reach the World. It all starts with just one voice. That takes a stand, that makes a choice to live for God and not hesitate to tell the world about amazing grace. One day that sea somehow
The only thing that's going to change the heart is who? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. We, we know that. But as we look to the, amen, I love that. Uh, I, need, I need to put him in my amen corner. Yeah, I love that. Uh, but before Jesus, and I, I'm getting there, before Jesus ascended, he gave what is called the Great Commission. And, and commission, that word means authoritative command. It means a directive. It means a directive. Uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. It says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee. And what that eleven there is referring to is the remaining disciples after Judas, uh, was, after he died. Uh, but the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even and to the end of the world. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we just thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. God, thank you for these individuals, God, that's here. And, and God, I pray for those that's watching online. God, whatever the need may be in their life, God, we know that Jesus is the only thing that can, that can help it, God. And I pray, Lord, as a church, Lord, help us, Lord, in this next church year, God, to to be able to, to look to you for guidance, God. And first and foremost, that we would go out and reach the world, reach the lost, God, for you. It's not putting a feather in our hat, God. It's, it's to see souls saved and lives changed, God. And I pray today, Lord, you'd speak through me. God, help me today. God, to speak the truth in love, God. Lord, that they would see my heart, God. That they would see, Lord, you lay on my heart. And, and I pray, help us, Lord, as we leave here today. God, if we're Christian. Lord, that we would see opportunities to share your son, Jesus, Lord. And I pray that there for anybody that going to sound my voice this morning that does not know you as Lord and Savior. Today is the day. God, if they can accept you, Lord. It's all about you. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If I can get up there. Um, <clears throat> but we're looking at the, the Great Commission, and, and he gave the church its orders and what he expects of us. That's, that's what we see here. Jesus had appearances. There's numerous appearances that he had uh, after he was resurrected, and, and this is one of them here that we see. And, and one thing to notice, if you notice the disciples in verse 17, here you are, you've got 11 disciples that's followed them uh, through thick and thin, and notice in verse 17 it says, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but notice, but some died. Some died. It's the same way today, is it not? People doubt all day long. And, 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 I, and I hate to say it, but uh, Christians a lot of times doubt, just like these disciples did. You know, it, it, we're not the, the only ones uh, doing this. And, and I know as far as a growth as a Christian, we talked about last week, you know, get, getting deeper in the water, quit saying in the shallow wind, but the swimming in the deep water of, of grace and mercy and what God has called us to do to keep growing. And I know as we grow, there's times we've all doubted. You know, maybe Satan whispers, you know, you're not really saved. You may have even doubted your salvation. But I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus Christ, if he saved your soul, amen, I tell you what, he has saved your soul. At, at 1 John 5 and 13, you can know without a shadow of a doubt. There's not no hope so, maybe so. You can know so this morning that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. If there's any doubt in your mind, make it sure today. But we know that some unworshipped, but then some what? They doubt they didn't know. And, and the disciple is any believer. We accept Jesus. We're, we're, we're making a disciple. Uh, the problem that we're having is growing disciples. You know, growing disciples. You know, if I, I hadn't, uh, just say if I ate lunch on Sunday, and I didn't eat again until next Sunday, and I'm talking about physical food. Am I going to be hungry? I'm going to be down with the hill, I promise you. Because as you can tell, my wife loves to cook. I love to eat, so we make a good combination. Okay, make a good. Uh, but you can tell I've not missed many meals, okay? I'll go ahead and say that. But the thing is, we do the same thing spiritually. 
We get fed for an hour on Sunday. We put it down. We don't pick it up the next week. That's what we're doing spiritually, guys. We've got to get in God's Word. If we're going to see Jesus make a difference in our life. Again, there's reasons, but there's excuses. We've made too many excuses. We've got to get back in God's Word. But the problem we have is growing disciples. But I want you to look at Acts chapter 17, verse 6. Uh, i tell you what, I, I forgot to read that. Go ahead and read Go Go back to Acts chapter 1, verse 3. I mentioned that earlier, didn't even mention it. We, we know Jesus appeared to them there in Matthew chapter 28, but I wanted to share with you the last time that he shared a message with them. We see in verse 3 of Acts chapter 1, it says, To whom also he showed himself alive, after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times of the season which the Father hath put in his own power. He says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the other most uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So we see verse 8. If you want to go back to verse 8, Brady. The last thing that he told them before he ascended into heaven, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto, both, uh, unto me both in Jerusalem. Now Jerusalem, back then, would be their hometown. Now, our hometown is Townley, Alabama. If you look at the census, if it's true, uh, there's 841 residents of Townley, Alabama. Do we have 841 people in this church? No. But we're reaching our Jerusalem. Judea is kind of like our county. Walker County has 63,000 some odd residents in Walker County. Our Walker Baptist Association just so you know, is trying to go door to door to every home in Walker County to reach the lost for Christ, to reach the world, to reach that Judea. And it talks about Samaria. Now, Samaria was those people that everybody kind of shunned. They didn't want to go across the, the tracks, or they didn't want to go to this area. That's what Samaria was. But what does he tell us here? He said, You should be witness unto me in Jerusalem, in your hometown. Surrounding areas of death, but also go to those that nobody else to go to. Amen. We got it because you know why? They're a soul. They're a soul. And then also it says, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So that encompasses everybody. So if we look to just the population, 841 in town, Walker County, 63,000 and some odd people. Even Carbon Hill's got 1,400 folks. Oakland has. Uh, 600 and something folks. Jasper's got 13,000 as far as population goes. If you look back to Alabama State Board of Missions, they send me reports there so often, and, and, and it shows within a one-mile radius of this church, if you put a, a stake right here one mile out, uh, it, it, there's 93 folks within that one-mile radius. Uh, three miles, it goes up to 758. And then if you go a five-mile radius, in which the people that go visit, they know. We look at that, that list. Uh, that's 2,423 souls within just, I, I would say, five-minute drive. But you need, don't even need to drive the speed limit when you say five miles. Uh, Ten-minute drive to this church right here. Do we have 2,400 something here? No, we don't. So do we see a need that we can reach our Jerusalem? Amen. In spite of all the conditions around us, you know, when I was praying about this church, 
I, I tell you guys, y'all are on my heart, Shelly, I tell you, we, we felt led to be here, I felt led to be here, still feel led to be here, thankful that, that God has called me here, but the one thing you hear about, well, Tammy, they lost the school, you know, they lost this, they lost that, well, if you look at the census, there's plenty of folks within a rock, almost a rock throw distance from this church right here, that need to hear about the gospel, amen, amen, amen. And, and I, I'm serious, guys. That we, in spite of all the, the reasons or the excuses, I mean, as I told you, there's two different things. We, we offer a lot of excuses. Well, that's the pastor's job. That ain't what it says right here in God's Word. It's all of our jobs if we're disciples. So the Great Commission still stands to take the gospel to the lost and dying world. Amen. So this morning... Before Caleb calls you and asks you, have you heard about the Great Commission? Have you heard about the Great Commission? Like, raise your hand. Okay, nobody has? Okay. Let's start over here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, but even if it's 50%, even if it was 20%, even if it was 10% or 5%, that's sad that Christians, so-called Christians, do not heard, have not heard or didn't know what the Great Commission was being preached in their church. The question I have this morning are we doing, as a church, all we can to reach the world around us? Our Jerusalem. The last time we had door-to-door -door evangelism, we had three folks. Now, there was some reason someone wasn't there. We had three folks. Door, door, door. The more people you have, the more homes you hit. Amen. Amen. Three folks. Going back to Matthew. No, excuse me. Go to Acts chapter 17, verse 6. Acts 17, 6. Not look on the screen. Jesus gave them the Great Commission. The last time he spoke to them was in Acts chapter 1. But that message was so powerful, and the witness that they had, that they were accused of turning the world upside down. Look, it says, And when they had found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren under the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come here hither also. They were accused of turning the world upside down. And I know we're a small, to other people, small group of believers here in town, Alabama, but guys, we have the authority to turn the world upside down. Because that's what he told us we could do, to turn the world upside down. That message is powerful. Going back to Matthew chapter 28. Verse 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. But notice in verse 19, it says, Go. Go ye therefore. It says go. It's a word of action. It means as you go, share his message. Because our lives should direct people to Jesus. We're told to teach. And it means to make disciples. It means to make disciples. And instruct and, and, and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It means to grow. As a Christian, it's important that you get in Sunday school, get in Wednesday night Bible study, get in, I mean, I'm telling you guys, to grow. That's where you grow. Main thing is get into the Word of God on your own. Mark chapter 16. Verse 16 says, when we talk about going, it says, He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach it to everyone. That's present tense. Because in my life, our life, we're either saying that He is my Lord and Savior, and you can know Him, or that it doesn't make a difference in my life. I'll say this, and, and I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to say it anyway. 
I've had people that have visited this church that luckily was told they was invited by someone. They don't come here no longer. They're, they were saved. And they were driving in. They started showing up on a Sunday morning, or Sunday morning, Sunday night, eating Wednesday night. And then the person that invited them, they looked at me and they said, I thought they came to church every time they go to them. No, I'm sorry they don't. They don't. And I didn't have any excuse. I couldn't say it. I didn't have it. I just said, hey, they, they're just not a faithful member. And this is before COVID, okay? They said they weren't a faithful member of our church. What is our life telling the people around us? Amen? I'm just being honest with you. Am I preaching the truth this morning? Amen. Amen. I know I know I am. But our message, Jesus tells them to share a specific message. It says to teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded to you and love with you all, even at the end of the age or end of the world. Um, but he tells them to observe all things I've commanded you. As you go, share the gospel. And that, that gospel is the good news. That Jesus came into this world to make it all a reality. Our, our message is not about a denomination. Right? It's about Jesus being the main thing. I'm Baptist by choice, but I'm a Christian who trusts in Jesus Christ and my Lord and Savior. If the Baptists start doing things that you have other so-called denominations doing, I'll be out of Baptist denomination, okay? Because I'm a Jesus follower. I'm not, I'm not following a denomination. And today, yes, if you join our church, you're joining a, a, a Baptist church. But my allegiance is to Jesus, amen? amen. And, and, and Jesus is, is the one. So our message is not about a denomination. It's not about town and first Baptist church either. It's not about a preacher. It's not about me. Brother Mickey Crane used to always, he, he was talking to a guy one time, and he hadn't been in a crowd, and, and this guy looked up, and, and he was with him, I don't know if it was an eating establishment or what, he said, oh, Brother Mickey right there, he saved me. That's what he told me. And I'll never forget what Brother Mickey said, well, I'll tell you what, if I save you, then you ain't going nowhere, okay? It's Jesus that saved. Jesus is saved. We can just lead you to the water, but you've got you to be able to drink it. But it's not about a preacher. It's not about your dress. You know, I'm, I'm not wearing you know, a, a golf shirt. People look at me like I'm crazy because I wear a tie and suit. I just, again, it ain't about your dress. It ain't about the, the music. It ain't the style of music. It ain't anything like that. All these things are important. But listen, it cannot save a soul. When you get down to it, it can't save a soul. Because we have a powerful message, and that message is the world needs Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus, you need Jesus as well. Our mission are to go to, to tell all the nations. We, we read there in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, that to every creature. Our, our mission is to every person in the world, in our local community, in our nation, and in our world. And I've even had this. This has not happened here. And, and, and if you thought it, I, I've had been at other churches, and they'll be like, "Well, I don't know why we're sending all this money to missionaries overseas when, you know, we can do something right here." You know, have you ever heard people say that before? Am I with? You're still supposed to do stuff in your backyard, okay? Uh, just because you're trying to reach the world. But as I said earlier, uh, and I didn't, you know, it's, it's important. That the people that say that is not going to go out door to door. They're not going to go out and tell the world about Jesus. We've got a job right here. But we've got a job of, again, local community, nation, or, or world. And how are we doing in reaching the world around us? I've already told you about the three people who go out to visit door to door. Well, Brother Wayne, I'm, I'm scared about what, you know, I don't want to be filming front lines. You want me to be filming front lines. You can go along with us, kind of see how it goes. We have leaders that can do that. And I'm thankful for those. But it's a blessing. Well, Brother Wayne, I don't see them here. Well, guess what? You can plant seeds. Plant seeds. We may not be the one that sees them grow, but plant the seed. Amen? Are we active in our Jerusalem? Are we active in our hometown? Are we fulfilling the Great Commission? And I'm asking the question, are we? Are we fulfilling the 
Great Commission. And I know even OCC, we, we give to, to other entities, I guess you could say, that, that support our missions, home missions, and one day we're going to get to where we just show all the things that we we give to, but one of those things is through Operation Christmas Child. I say, well, it's just a box, it's just a, a uh, you know, a present, it's just, you know, a shoe box. Do you realize that would be the only gift that some of these kids ever get? But it ain't even about the gift. Because what's neat about that box, I didn't think I had a box with me. But what's neat about that box is, is you're able to put it in the hands of a pastor that is sharing the message of Jesus Christ. And through that gift, they're actually able to go through the, what, the greatest journey. The ones that want to go through the greatest journey, that one box has the opportunity to reach, they say, seven people. So if you do 100 boxes or 50 boxes, 10 boxes, um, it was 10 boxes. You've got the opportunity to hopefully be able to, to reach or plant a seed in 70 people. we got a job here. we got a job in our, we, we support our association. We go door to door. But also through the missionaries, through those, these people that we're sending shoebox to, we're given an opportunity to reach the world. Amen. Amen. You can go to our website. Um, I don't remember all the places that our boxes have went to. Most of them have been in Africa, I believe it is. But you can go to our website. There's a, a uh, page just for Operation Christmas Child. It shows you where those boxes went to and what they impact. That you can, a, a church here in town in Alabama can have 6,000 miles away as bird flies to be able to reach the lost, reach the world. Amen. And that's just one thing. We have a heart for our community. But we see in verse 20, he tells us to teach them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. But notice, he don't just send us by ourselves. Don't send us in the world without any resources. Those that go out door to door knocking on doors, you can't go in your own power. Amen. you got to go in the name of Jesus. You go in, in His power. So we're promised His presence because He says, Lo, I'm with you always. As a child of God, as a disciple of God, He's always there with me. Amen. Amen. Even when I get, like verse 17, they were sitting there looking at the resurrected Christ and there were still some that were doubting. When we get to a point that we may even doubt where we're at in life at times, in our walk, just like those disciples, we can go to him. We know he's, with, he's there with us always. He's with us there all the time and, and we're promised his presence. I don't come here every week just to, you know, I don't even like hear myself talk. But I'm here today behind this pulpit because I know the power of what God can do in your life and mine. Amen. And that's the honest truth, guys. He, he, he's right there with us. When you go through troubled times, when you go down, you feel like you, you can't, even, can't even take another step. God's there with you. Jesus is there with you, amen, to help you through those times. We won't share life alone. We won't share the gospel alone if we're a child of God. But we're also promised His power. He will put the power to your words. Put the power to your words. Can we all agree this world needs Jesus? Amen. You know, we've been for years, 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 you know, countries have paid each other to try to find peace. You know, they've done everything. Money can't buy peace. They've tried everything. Try to form committees and, and different things and try to form to make peace. But the only way we're going to see peace in people's lives in our world is through Jesus. Jesus gives us that peace. But I think a lot of times what happens is, is we sit there and we think, man, there's a, there's a lot of folks 
Brother Wayne, you told me 841 here in town. That's a lot of folks. There ain't no way you can reach every one of them. In our five-mile radius, you can't, you can't reach that 2,400-something people. You can't do that. There just ain't no way you can do it. So guess what happens? Instead of going, they're sitting. He says to go. He don't say sit. Amen. Amen. That's what the Word says. It says go. We've got to go. Share a story with you, and my Shelly come play verse presentation. We can all agree this world needs Jesus. In our church, going forward and in, in, in the past, we need Jesus too, amen. We need him. I need him. But we start thinking about all the all the talk. Well, that's just too yeah, yeah, well, you can, there's no way you can reach all those folks. Brother Wayne, we've tried everything here for 130 years. We've tried it all. It ain't worked. I'm just doing what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. He's told us to go. He's told you to go. You've got your, uh, again, you've been commanded. You've been given a directive. You've been given that great commission. But there's a story, and I printed it off because I knew uh, y'all know I, I mess up stories and and even jokes sometimes, believe it or not. But it talks about the story revolving around an old man who goes for a walk on the beach after a big storm has passed. And that day, the beach was littered with starfish, and from a distance, he spotted a little boy. The boy seemed to be picking up something, throwing it back into the sea. The man could see that he was doing this over and over again. The man asked the boy what he was doing. The boy replied that he was throwing the starfish back into the ocean. He said that if they were left there on the beach, they would die when the sun got high. To this, the old man replied that there were thousands of starfish on the beach. You won't make much of a difference, he told him. The boy picked up another starfish and threw it back into the sea, smiling. He then turned and told the man, I made a difference in that. I made a difference in that. How beautiful is that? The starfish story is a good reminder to all of us that yes, even the smallest thing can make a difference. It can make a difference in someone's life. And if we can just touch and realize what God has called us to do, just that simple gesture of sharing Jesus, we said for a long time, how many more do we always say? One more? We ain't never finished. We want to see one more saved. Yes, they may be thousands within our five mile radius. But when one comes to know him, again, we, we've made a difference through the Word of God in that. And that's what it's all about. But today, if you don't know Jesus, today's the day to accept him. And. As a Christian, I pray this has convicted your heart like it has mine. That as we begin this new year, that we forget about last church year, that we set goals for this next year to reach the lost, to reach our community for Christ, reach your co-workers, your friends, to be committed, to be a church, to be faithful to God for first and foremost. Let Him make a difference in your life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for your grace and mercy. I pray, God, just thanking you for, for all that you do, all that you've done. And, and Lord, I pray that you help us as a church, God, to be reminded of, her, of what you have directed us, commanded us to do. I pray for our community. I pray for everybody. Within our community, Lord, that doesn't know you. I pray that as they drive by, Lord, that they just feel your presence. Draw them in. And I, I pray going forward, help us to reach our local community, God, and even all around the world, God, that, that you would just touch every ministry, every missionary. God, we know we've, we've seen many missionaries even in Afghanistan, God has given up their lives for you. 
And I pray, God, that you would keep your hand over all the missionaries, all those who are spreading the gospel of your son Jesus. Again, forgive us for we beg you. We just love you in Jesus' name. Amen. As she begins to play. Thank <laughs> you.